video number two, friends, of my Sprayed Edge collection. So if you haven't checked out video one, it's the one that's on my mantle. It's all the taller edition books. Um, and then this one is going to be my shorter books. These ones, all those are really close to the same size. They're like a centimeter or two off. These are all over the place and it drives me nuts. I mean, like, look at the size difference, okay? Look at the size difference. Why are they all so different? Um, and it's not just because some of them are from the US and some of them are the UK. I mean, these are really all over the place. There's like 10 different sizes uh, varying within like a whole inch on this shelf. And I don't understand how there can be so many printing formats. It does not seem efficient for whoever actually makes the books, but I don't make these decisions. Anyway, I gotta figure out a better way to display these because this is not as pretty as I would like it to be. Like, it's all right, but they're all over the place and I don't really know what to do about that. Um, yeah, if anybody has any suggestions, I'm willing to hear them. The ones on the mantle look so nice and I used to have those over here, but I put them on the mantle because I wanna look them up all the time. And I sort of can't see these behind the couch. But maybe I could just put them up higher. But these are the books that I read the most. So like, that would be inefficient. The Wicked Fox. We'll start with purple. It's kind of hot, like hot pinky purple anyway. Um, this is the Fairy Loot Edition. And it's red underneath, which is interesting for a purple book. I guess it sort of goes together. This is, uh, this one is by Kat Cho, and it's signed, and is there any reverse dust jacket art? There's nothing else like super schmancy about this one. Oh look, there's the bookmark that comes with it. I haven't read it though, I wonder why it's in the middle of the book, that's super weird. Anyway, there's that one. Next, if I've read these, I'll let you know, and I'll say how good they are. This is The Beholder, this is also a Fairy Loot edition. Um, and it is signed, and look, she signed it with a gold sharpie. That's what I would do if I was an author, which I am not yet. Perhaps I will be someday. There's the, the cover, I guess. It's red. I want to say that this came with a pin that was like a dress or something. So, and I, it was recommended for people who liked the selection, which I read the selection. I liked the selection. It's not my favorite of all time, okay? That inevitable, the Victorian thing. This is a book I just bought from Second and Charles back when I thought I could spray my own edges. I say spray. Um, I bought a sprayer off from the craft store. Never could get it to work right. It just splattered. It didn't spray. Um, I'm not super crafty. I hand painted this one with acrylic like a lot of YouTube videos say to do. That's a bad idea. And no shade to all the people that are doing it. It does look pretty on the shelf. But when you go to read it, um, the pages stick together. And so I individually went through and separated to each page. And listen, I did really, really thin layers, like everybody recommends. I even thinned the paint a little bit just to make sure it wasn't super tacky like acrylic paint can be. But I really wanted a rose gold metallic sprayed edge book, which I don't have other than this one that I painted. But when I separated the edges, the paint peeled a little bit. And there's some foxing, and you really can't see it in this video, but you can definitely see it on the shelf. So I don't recommend doing that. If you're gonna do it, figure out how to use a sprayer or use a can of spray paint, which would involve buying a lot of cans of spray paint for different colors. So I don't know. Definitely, if you are an airbrush artist of any kind, uh, yeah, you should try doing books. There's some really great artists on Instagram that do some amazing things with spray edge books. This is the Fox and Wit edition of If These Wings Could Fly which was, is a contemporary YA novel, which is not like my preferred genre, so I haven't read this yet, but they're almost salmon colored edges. Um, I do recommend her box, by the way. This one came with a uh, sticker that's got the author's signature. Um, her box is really, really great for useful items. Oh, this is really pretty, I'm gonna show you this. It's kind of metallic blue and there's birds on the spine, so this would be pretty without the dust jacket. But uh, like, okay, can you see up there? No, you can't see. Let me turn you a little bit. See right there, right there. It's a raven. It's a rainbow raven, so you really can't, it's not super detailed. But that was an embroidery set that came with one of her boxes. And it came with some chocolates to eat while you were doing embroidery. And just like really stuff that probably 
not older people, like I'm not old, okay? I'm not that old, but like I'm not gonna use pins. I'm probably not gonna cover my jacket in bookish pins. I might throw one on my laptop bag or something, but I'm not gonna use a hundred of them. Um, so Fox and Wit has like activities and other kinds of stuff. She does dust jackets, things that you will definitely use. So I do really recommend her box, I love it. This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. It's got red sprayed edges. This one came from Fairy Loot as well. And it's got not only reverse dust jacket art, this is a really recent one, but also it's got a foil embossed spine that's pink. So that's really pretty. I have not seen one that's bright pink like that. There's that one. Next is another fairy loot, Master of One. It's funny that most of the Goldsboro books tend to be like the taller ones, and then most of the fairy loot ones tend to be shorter. Or actually really fairy loots all over the place. Anyway, that is strange. I don't know if I have a single Goldsboro GSFF book on this shelf. Isn't that interesting? If anybody is like into publishing and knows a lot about that, I would love to hear why. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so that's Master of One, and this one's by Garth Nix also, isn't it? No, is it not? Did I hallucinate that? No, Jones and Bennett. What else is by Garth Nix? thought I had two books by Garth Nix. I could be full of it. I don't know. All right, next is Aurora Burning. Book two of the Aurora Rising series by Jay Kristoff. This is the Goldsboro edition. There's also sprayed edge ones done by Illumicrate um, that are hot pink and bright blue, but the Goldsboro ones are purple and orange. And the purple one is right here, right there. And book three is not available for pre-order yet, um, but it will be green and it will have, oh gosh, what is the name of the character? Not Cal, cause he's on Tyler. Is it Tyler? No, it's not Tyler. Tyler's the preppy one. Finian, it will have Finian on the cover. And so many people are like, oh, I don't like this cover. I love Finian. I'm super excited that he's going to be on the cover. So next is the Waterstones special edition of Deep Light. And it's got orange sprayed edges. So it's the only fancy thing. It's not signed, um, but it is signed. I'm lying. It's totally signed. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, this one's signed. I have not gotten to read this yet but it got really rave reviews and so, um, and it got some awards. So definitely grabbed it when I could. This one is Goddess in the Machine. This is an Owl Crate edition. I don't have the Owl Crate subscription anymore, um, but I traded one of my other special edition books for this one because I really wanted to read it. It's sci-fi. This one has gold sprayed edges. And I don't think, there we go. There's a big star asterisk on the purple cover. I haven't got to read it yet, but when I saw the description, I really wanted it, so. This one is Star Daughter. Oh my gosh, every single book box came out with this book that month. So this must be really good, and yet I haven't seen any reviews for it. So I haven't picked it up. It hasn't been bumped up on my TBR list, um, which does tend to happen when books start getting really good reviews, and I have them on my shelf they kind of come more to my mental, up to the top of my mental TBR list. I don't really have a order of books that I'm a mood reader mainly, unless publishers send me arcs and then I try to get them read before the published date. But recently, I guess because of COVID and shipping and manufacturing and all the delays, I've been getting arcs like really way too close to the publication date for me to be able to read them uh, beforehand. I got For the Wolf, I was really excited about that, but I got it and then like it got published like the very same week. So I still haven't had time to read it because I had like three other arcs ahead of it. But anyway, this one, was this one the Fairy Loot? Yeah, this is Fairy Loot edition and so it's got reverse dust jacket art and it's got metallic -y gold edges, but they're not like shiny, they're like sparkly. Can you see the sparkle? Can you can't really see the sparkle, but yeah, they're more sparkly than um, like Goddess in the Machine, which is like old school metallic, and this one's more like shimmery. And then we have A Deadly Education. This is the Owl Crate edition, and the reason I got this one, even though I already had the Illumicrate Crate subscription, was they said it was gonna be a naked dust jacket, which I tend to like more. It's kind of my thing. 
And it, I don't love this one. I think it's just the yellow and purple looks kind of, I don't know. It looks like a children's book to me or something. Anyway, I still haven't read the book. So if anybody's read this, and it's good, well, let me know. I have two dang copies of it. And I haven't read it yet to know if I, need, if I should get rid of one. I don't know. These are decisions that are too hard to make sometimes. <sighs> Eventually, I'm going to have to get some water from talking so much. I don't like talking to people. This is the most I talk to people. It's online. My voice is not used to it. Bone Crier's Moon. Fairy Loot Edition. It's light, light green and sort of metallic-y. A sparkly metallic. You can't really see it. Um, it's signed and it's got these like sword, heart, sword, and pages. Does it have reverse dust jacket art? Yes, it does. And here it is. Whoop, whoop. What's that remind you of? Uh -oh. The girl looks a lot like a uh, Poppy from Blood and Ash. I read book one. I'm like the only person in the world that did not like that book. So I haven't read the others. Only person who didn't like that book. I don't know why. I just don't like Poppy. All right. These Rebel Waves. Bright green, Kelly green edges, which is cool. It's super rare color for, uh, why are all the edges, they are either usually red or like teal. Those are the two most popular colors other than maybe black. Black is popular too. So this is one that I think I traded for this one as well. And this one is signed, but I still haven't read it. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Do you know why I traded for this book? Not because I knew anything about it. This was before the pirate trend of books came out. This was like one of the first piratey books in the pirate trend. So I got this book before that because I had a shelf full of sprayed edges and I had no green and it really bothered me. Um, yeah, that's a really weird reason to buy a book, but that's why I bought this book. But it's piratey, and I've recently read several pirate books that I really liked a lot, including Fable and um, Daughter of the Pirate King, um, both of which I absolutely adored. So I'm sure I'll like that one when I finally read it. This one is A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. This was a special order by Fairy Loot. It did not come in a box. You had to order this um, separately. But the description looked really good, and it came with a uh, signed book plate. Which, does anybody stick their signed book plates in their books? I can't. I don't know why. I can't. The idea of a sticker and a book, like, don't go together in my head. So, I can't stick. I just stick them in the book. But I don't stick them to the book. I, I don't know why I can't do that. If they're signed, that's one thing. But if it's a sticker, I don't know why. I can't. It's a mental thing. Fable. This is a really good book. Pirate books have a tendency to cast the pirates in a good pirate light. Look, they're the good pirates. They're pirates, but they're really nice. I mean, they're pirates, right? They're thieves. This is real pirates, okay? These are real thieves. These are not the good guy. But, of course, you're still going to follow along. You're still going to um, end up liking them. You can like people that are the villains. It's okay. It happens all the time, I promise. So this is a really pretty edition. This is totally different from the um, regular cover, which looks a lot like um, the Disney movie. Ugh, and now it's left me. What's the Disney movie with the, uh, Brave, the girl from Brave. The regular cover looks like the girl from Brave. This one I feel like is much more appropriate to the book. So that's interesting. Sparkly metallic edges, but it's really short. I don't have namesake. I don't have the second book. I actually got lucky enough to got uh, to get approved for the e arc, and I read it before it came out. And I didn't like the second one as much as I liked the first one. It sort of just ties up all the loose ends in this one, but it's not as good of a story. This is by far the superior story, and you don't have to read the second one. You can read this one. It's good standalone if you if you want that. <coughs> Goodness, I'm gonna lose my voice. Should have brought a bottle of water, but now it'd be weird if I walked away in the middle of a live. Children of Virtue and Vengeance. This is the Waterstones edition. No, I have not removed the sticker yet. Um, and it's teal, it's signed. I have the Barnes and Noble special edition of book one of this, and it's taller 
and it's red underneath and it doesn't look anything like this one. Um, don't ask me why I did that. It's deeply upsetting to me that I put it way far away on the shelf from this one so I won't be reminded of my craziness in doing that. Why did I do that? I don't know. The Bright and the Pale. This is a very recent Fairy Loot one, so I haven't had a chance to read it. Oh, by the way, uh, Tommy Adiemi, I didn't even tell you. The book one of that, Children of Blood and Bone, I've read that. I haven't read Children of Virtue and Vengeance yet, but I really liked book one. Only thing I didn't like is I didn't like her naming of um, the animals because it was like too close to the name of a, the real animal. I can't think of the particular, like, there was like a jaguar maybe. It was a little nitpicky thing that bothered me because, you know, whatever. The book is still excellent. Great book. Very unique. This one has snow blue metallic edges from Fairy Loot. Oh, there's a reverse dust jacket. Do, 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 do. Oh, look. He's got an eye patch that automatically bumps it up on my TBR list. Why is it getting so dark in here? There we go. That's a little better. And it's got this... I, I say it pretty designed. That looks like an eyeball. Does that not look like an eyeball ripped out of somebody's head? That's probably not. What, well, actually, since he's got an eye patch, that might be exactly what that is. Hmm. Interesting. That definitely bumps it up a couple notches on my mental TBR list. Now I want to know how he lost the eye. That's morbid. Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. I've got another book that I've read by her. What is it called? I can't remember. Um, it's probably upstairs, but it was really good. Oh, The Wicked Deep. Yeah, I read that. I haven't read this one. Uh, this one was, is this the Fairy Loot edition? To do, because I got two of these. I got Fairy Loot and I got Lit Joy. And I think I, I got rid of one of them and it was probably the other. Yeah, I think Lit Joy was the other one. This one's probably the Fairy Loot edition. It is signed and it's got dark blue sprayed edges and it's got a white uh cover instead of the original the original one was black next all the stars and teeth this is another pirate book that i have not gotten to read yet but look at the cover it's got a skull and an octopus i mean this whole thing would make such a pretty tattoo would it not like i need to read this book and see if i super like it because maybe tattoo time I think this one was also Fairy Loot, but it doesn't have a bookmark in it. And that's how I generally know that my books are from Fairy Loot because I stick the bookmark from that book into the book. What, what's this? Oh, wait. Oh, okay, never mind. This is the Fox and Wit edition of this book. So it came with a little pirate flag. Isn't that cute? Pirate flag bookmark. That's why. Okay, so this one's the Fox and Wit edition. I don't know if she did book two. If she did, I didn't get it. I know Owl Crate did book one and two. This one I got off Etsy. Um, I don't remember who the seller was. I'll have to go back and look and post it um, in the comments below because they did a really nice job of purple metallic sprayed edges. Um, I just really wanted a copy of this book, Ghost Stories, and they happen to have it with sprayed edges, so why would I get a sprayed edge card? Why? Why not? already done Aurora Rising, so let's get to the binding. Another book in the library, librarian trope, obviously, the binding. Um, this one's the Waterstones edition, purple sprayed edges. I need to show you, is that not gorgeous? It looks like an antique book, it's so pretty. Um, this is a book that I can only tell you that it's in the librarian trope and I can tell you nothing else about this book without spoiling it for you. It is signed. Um, I really liked this book. I've heard that the author may be problematic, but I have not done my own research into that. So please do your own research. Um, but I did like the book and there is a book too, but this is a complete book in and of itself. It didn't need a book too. I don't know what book two is about. I don't have that one. Oh, look. Here's Bone Crier's Dawn, the second book to Bone Crier's Moon, which was green. This one is silver. And I don't think they usually don't do, yeah, they didn't do reverse dust jacket art on the second book. Next, this is the Illumicrate edition of A Darker Shade of Magic. Um, it came in a special edition box. 
which was really fun. And it's got like almost gunmetal gray uh, metallic edges. They are, they have done the other two books to this series. We just haven't gotten them yet for anybody who's ordered them. And when they did the original box, it only had this book, but it had three dust jackets. So like they had to do the other two. And they finally did the other two. The other two I think are supposed to ship this month. Um, but look, it says Illumicrate Special Editions on the back. But anyway, Victoria Schwab is one of my favorite authors. So had to get that one. I think I have everything she's published, including her new comic books are coming out. I got lucky enough um, to get a sneak peek of them from the publisher of the comic book from Titan Comics, and they look so good. They're a uh, part of the Vicious and Villains series, so check those comic books out. I've got the link in my profile under book news um, if you're interested in if you read comics. This one's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, another one that everybody and their mama came out with an edition of this book. I think this one, where did this one come from? I don't remember. Let's see, does it say anything about where it came from? I don't know. I know it was not, there was a blue one from Forbidden Planet. I'm gonna guess that this is the Fairy Loot edition. Did Fairy Loot do an edition? I don't know, I don't remember. Hold on, let me look in the front of the book and see. Where did this come from? Okay, Hardback, Forbidden Planet, Waterstones, Illumicrate, and Ebook. I think this is the Waterstones edition? No, wait, 644. No, this is the Illumicrate edition. Okay, Illumicrate. The Illumicrate one is silver and gray, and check out B.E. Schwab's page because they're actually doing an anniversary edition of this book. Um, I think it's white, anyway, but I already have a copy, so. And everybody thinks that this is V.E. Schwab's best work. I disagree. I think that Vicious and Villains are her best work. By far, if you like the moral, morally ambiguous hero and villain, that's like the textbook, like next to morally ambiguous in the dictionary is V.E. Schwab's Vicious and Villains. It's awesome. It's by far my, my favorite duology ever and her best work in my opinion. This is the bookish box edition of This Will Kill That. This Will Kill That is a funny name for a book. Um, it's by Danielle Rue, but uh, it's from a poem. I'm trying to remember uh, who wrote the poem, but it's from a famous poem. It might be Shakespeare, but I might be full of shit. The reason I got this book, I read it. It was a pretty good book. It's the first in a series, but I haven't seen the second one. I don't know if it's come out yet. Look at the cover. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It had a skull, and they showed just like a little sneak peek of the purple with the skull. Um, and I was obsessed. So, this came from the bookish box. Next are my ridiculous, I spent so much effort trying to find editions of Gideon and Harrow the Ninth. So, this one came from. Illumicrate, I think. Signed limited edition published in association with Illumicrate. That's back when I had their subscription. I got lucky enough to get this book. It's got black sprayed edges, but some of the ones that came from the regular bookstore, like all the first editions of Gideon the Ninth, the first edition first printings had black sprayed edges. So um, the only thing different about the Illumicrate one from the ones that you would find on the shelf are obviously that they're signed and they've got that tip in sign page with the sword with Gideon's sword. Nothing else fancy about these except for of course that gorgeous um, night house skull on the uh, house of the night. I gallery wrapped these too. This one's Harrow. I didn't get the Illumicrate edition of this. I missed that somehow or actually you know I didn't miss it but I was like I can just get it from the regular bookstore because the first edition, first printings of these were supposed to have black sprayed edges, but only a limited number of them went out and they only went out to indie bookstores. So I had to call everybody and their mom's indie bookstore to try to find a copy that had black sprayed edges. It was very difficult. I finally found one with the help of friends on Instagram. Thank you, you are all lovely. This one has really fun end papers. 
you shall see. And I ordered from Forbidden Planet as well to get a signed copy because I wasn't sure um, if that would have black sprayed edges and it didn't, it's just signed. So this is the one that ends up displayed and I've got a signed copy too. Maybe I'll do a giveaway for that one, the signed copy. A River of Royal Blood. This one, was this a fairy loot book? Where did this come from? I got, yeah, this is a fairy loot book. I got the um, arc of this book um, and it's a two sisters book instead of the typical YA, a girl and a boy and the adventures that they go on while falling in love, which is, you know, it's trope. If you like that trope, that's cool. Um, I like the um, blood family trope. These are two sisters. Uh, they have to battle each other for the throne. Only one of them can live. And it's really good. It's a really quick read too. Super quick, super easy read. It's definitely part of a series though. There will be more. Shielded by Kaylin Flanders. It's got black sprayed edges. It came from Fairy Loot and underneath it's green and it's got like a let me see if I can get the right angle. There you go. It's got like a, a it looks like a Gaelic knot, sort of, maybe, not really, um, on there. But I really was excited about this one because it's got a girl with a sword on the cover. And even though they aren't my favorite covers, like a girl with a sword, I'm probably going to read that book. Girls with swords. It's not to love. Next. Last but not least at least for the sprayed edges. There will be a video three of the stenciled edges because I have got to go get a drink of water. Um, Andrew Michael Hurley, Starve Acre. This is the Waterstones edition. It is signed and it's got black sprayed edges. Frankly, I got this one because I wanted something else from Waterstones and the shipping to the US was really high if you only got one book. If you got two books, it made a lot more sense. I think it was like seven bucks. Um, so I got this one too and I still haven't read it, but uh, it's so pretty. I figured I'm such a cover buyer. You know, if that's a thing. All right. So that is my short sprayed edge books. If you have any questions, let me know and keep an eye out for my stenciled edge books video coming shortly.